So here was the site last night, 722.2, and uh, it's about 7.50 in the morning. There was a group of people up on top, up there in that area, and then I camped there. Uh, my uh, camped over there. And, uh, well, the good news is that when I'm hiking, the not so good news is that it's going to be about a 20 mile water carry. And that's not good. Anyway, I'll be kind of, uh, yeah, so besides going, having to do a 20 mile water carry, uh, we'll be climbing over 10,000 feet today. Um, the first time ever on this uh, hike, unless anybody climbed to San Jacinto Peak, which is 10,834, this would be the highest. And uh, still not acclimated to the elevation because it's uh, really taking its toll on my breathing. I do have some of that oxygen that I mentioned earlier, but if I feel myself getting even shorter breath, I'll then use that. So yeah, um, see how I go. This is a trail that I'm looking at right now. And I just left camp a little bit ago. I'm only then about 0.1 miles, almost 0.2. All right, talk to you guys later. I, I need to really concentrate on climbing that. Okay. Right, I've walked only 0.46 of a mile and I climbed, I don't know. Over 100 feet. I'm not sure how long it's been. Uh, yeah, the elevation is definitely. I'm feeling it, and I'm getting to some shade, which is good. The bad thing about it, if there is a bad thing about it, is that we've noticed that the bears like to hang out in the shade. Yesterday, a little bit after I got to the tent, there was another bear sighting. It was a big bear, but it was going the opposite way and down, down a ways from the hiker. So the hiker just kind of stayed quiet. And he came up to our tent site as the bear was going the other way. Um, hiker shortly in, I camped out pretty close to another hiker. She lives in Ashland, Oregon. She says the bears always go onto her, their orchard. There's nothing to be concerned about as long as there's no food or anything inside the tent. It should be okay that they probably would be looking for food last night. I didn't actually hear them. Um, well, somebody that is so used to the bears, I guess, can be so relaxed about it. But I, I'm not used to how many bears. I did kind of, I want to say scare one away. But I don't think it was scared. I think it just kind of didn't want to be around somebody yelling. Um, and, uh, whew. yeah, hopefully I'll get more acclimated. So I need to go 20 miles today, as I said earlier. And uh, I will be, um, oh boy, I'll be, um, if I continue, at this pace, that's like a little over half mile in a half hour. So it's an hour per mile, which is 20 hours. And I can't do that. I need to get the water at a 12 mile mark. And I don't feel like uh, hiking at two o'clock in the morning or whatever. Uh, so, I'm sure I'll increase my speed as the climbing goes down, but I suspect it won't, like it is right now, but I suspect it won't be that much more of a speed. As far as the videos go, I edited the one going out of Kennedy Meadows, and I export it to, ready to upload, but I can't load up, upload anything until I get Wi-Fi. Um, uh, so, last night, I was editing 
editing yesterday's video but I didn't uh, finish I just got too tired so I went to sleep around 9 o'clock a little bit later than I wanted to um, and then uh, tonight I'll try to finish editing that one and start on this one and hopefully by the time I get to Bishop if God willing I'll make it um, um, I will plan on on uh, uploading those videos and I'll put them one after another because I, I uh, well because you guys will be pretty much caught up with all the videos at that point uh, and anyway I'll talk to you so I'm not a, now at 98.65 not quite 10,000 suspect that I'll be going down a little bit start climbing again take the opportunity to gain a little bit of miles oops sorry about that <laughs> I was looking around showing you my beard <laughs> sorry uh, yeah take some time to get some miles it's gonna flatten out a little bit right here but I'm sure it's, it's got to go up to about 10,000 so <sighs> lovely trail I love it. I do believe that's bear claw. Uh, I suspect, I'm not sure. I don't see any heavy claws on the, underneath that missing, but yeah, I do see scratches. Um, probably letting us know that this is their territory. Yes, it is. But leave me alone. I'll be here. I'm just passing through. It's 723.5. So I haven't really gone that much. It's a lot of climbing. Um, I've only done 1.33 miles in uh, 51.57 minutes. So it's not looking very... Uh, <laughs> not looking as good as I'd like. But hopefully I'll level out and put some miles up. I, mean, I can only climb so much, right? Before it levels off. I mean, Forester Pass is at 13,000, and that's way out there. So, anyway, okay. Okay, so I have a little more climbing to do, but I've pretty much done a lot of it, and then we'll go up later on in a few miles. But just a little tip that I've learned here. See that rock right there? Whenever you're going to sit on top of something, whether it be a rock or something, and you just gonna be a little while and you don't want to take out your backpack put a rock like this close to where you're gonna sit behind you and then rest your backpack on the rock while you're sitting down that takes some of the load off your shoulders and your back okay so earlier what I mean earlier yesterday I was thinking all oh, that was snow over there and although I do see some snow way, way out there, that looks like just over that tree line, whatever that is. I don't, I don't know what the mountains those are. Anyway, I gotta get moving. Hello. So you know, one of the things that I was just thinking, um, as far as this, uh, my uh, journey so far at uh, in the PCT, when I first started the Pacific Crest Trail, I had my food bag. And I think I had like four days of food in it. And uh, and then I got to uh, my second day, I got to uh, Lake Marina and I had <laughs> and I had my burgers and all that, sodas, and next morning beer, next morning the burritos or burrito before I left. And then once I got to Lake Marina, I mean Mount Laguna, 
Um, I kind of, I don't remember, I took a, a pickle with a lot of pickle juice and I ate that at uh, Sunrise Highway. Um, <clears throat> and anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that I was very concerned in that in Mount Lagoon I had a five day resupply waiting for me, which I packaged some of the stuff and send some of the stuff home to olive oil. What I was just thinking is that I'm doing in the Sierra a 90 foot, a 90 mile carry going up 10,000 miles, I mean 10,000 feet elevation, uh, 20 miles with with no water, uh, carrying almost five liters of water, and I'm doing 90 miles. And I'm going like, wow. If I got myself, put myself back in the southern terminus right now, I would load up with uh, not even as much food as I have right now, and load up and get over to uh, Scissors Crossing without even stopping, maybe overnight camping at uh, Mount Laguna, just to have something, but no zeros. Uh, just go all the way to Scissors Crossing, see how much food I have, do a quick resupply, Continue on to Warner Springs, where I would probably have a, a box. And I mean, my strategy and my ability to do things, my knowledge has changed so much. It's amazing. I feel a lot more comfortable doing some backpacking stuff once I get back home. Okay, so I think this is, uh, the uh, sun's above me. Okay, there's another bear, bear thing that I'm looking at over there. And I'm pretty sure that it is. Oof. My goodness, what the heck happened here? See all that clawing on the. Uh, there's one little. It's not like that right there where it has an empty spot all the way up. But this is just clawed right on the one little area. And I'm pretty sure that's a bear. But I could be mistaken. I don't think so though because you see this claw marks over here? See the claw marks right there, and then in there. So I, I'm pretty sure that's a bear, but I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen that in other areas, like down in uh, Jacinto or, or that. And I know over here there's a lot more bears. Anyway, gotta get going. Hmm. I just saw that there. <laughs> no, that's not Mount Whitney. <laughs> that's, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I. I, I <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I almost feel like saying, wow, that's Mount Whitney. Now, there's a video um, uh, before the Kennedy Meadows one, I think. It shows that we had time off, and one of the things that we did uh, is go to the Whitney portal. And, and there is a picture of, or a video and a picture of uh, Mount Whitney from the Whitney portal. If you go to the Whitney portal, you're not going to see Mount Whitney. You have to see it like on the road right before you get to the Whitney portal. Then you can see it from the portal itself. Uh, it's, it's the other mountains block it. Okay. Okay, anyway. No, that's not, that's not the way that went. I'm sorry. Uh, I've tried to, since the beginning of this uh, video, this channel, the PCT series, I've tried to keep it real and my attitude real when I was down, depressed, when I was calling them PUDs because the guys from the AT brought it over. I don't want to call them PUDs because it's, I think it's kind of disrespectful actually and I apologize for anybody that may have got offended by that. Um, but I was just so, my attitude toward the desert section, toward the PCT was, it was truly becoming more of a chore and a chore that, <clears throat> I don't know, but having rested a little bit and the Sierra changes everything. Even though this kind of still, still looks kind of like the desert, it doesn't. Not after this few miles that I've been, I think I've done uh, 22 or so, 25, 27, I don't know. But look at those views. They're full of pine trees as far as you can see. 
now and then those mountains over there which are kind of like the, the ones that are above the tree line very high up i mean it's just beautiful and, and, and it's awe inspiring whereas the desert had just had me oh boy uh, it, it, it drains you down it, the desert works on you chips at you i think that's one of the reasons why so many people quit by the time they some quit by mount laguna some do by uh Idlewild, a lot do by Idlewild. Big Bear, a whole bunch more. It just kind of wears you down. And uh, I, uh, well, I, I have a lot to say about my hike and, and how this is progressing, but mm, no, this is not the, the video for it because I need to get the Kearsarge Pass. And hopefully I don't see any bears. <laughs> some stagnant pools of water so I still have a full liter and a half two three quarter liters so that's three liters and then I have about another liter so I have about four liters left still oh where did this water coming from I wonder if it's going that way starting over there hmm if there was fresher water over there, I probably would um, fill up just to just to be filled up. I'm gonna set the shade here a little bit. Check my water. And see what see what I'll do. Hmm. Looks like a lizard head or fish head or something like that. I think I took one over by, over by uh, Vasquez Rocks. It was kind of like that. Or somewhere over there. That's cool, huh? Let me see if I can... Oops. Well, I just, uh, trail was right there and I came around here. And it goes to this, uh... <laughs> Well maintained trail right here. It almost gives you the impression there's going to be like a house right there. You know, this is just the trail. Uh, a really nice looking meadow. Open. Those boulders right there. Hmm. It's just very nice. I could almost see or imagine a big campground you know a car road coming into this area bathrooms and people just it's beautiful i can just imagine with the snow up on top oh wow elevation is right now about 80 8800 so i've dropped quite a bit but still it is way above snow levels uh when there is snow so it'll be beautiful out here oh. <sighs> I think I have to take off my glasses for this one. Um, oh boy. Hey everybody. Um, so this part of the trail has just been so... Once it came down, I, you, know, you guys know that I don't like climbing. It's part of it. You know, that's just me though. Um, but I do climb, I actually I'm pretty good at it, but just slow. Uh, I've been, when I first started this hike, I never, you know, people were saying, oh, I want to do the PCT because I'm going to go soul searching. I don't want to go soul searching. And I want to find myself, I, I know myself. Um, but from the beginning of this hike, I don't know if I put it on the videos, on the first video or so, but I did tell my wife and pastor at church, I talked with him, uh, Pastor Jack. Hi, Pastor Jack. Um, but I was getting very emotional and I didn't know why. And then that went away. Then I just started getting, learning things about myself on the trail, about how I reacted to things. And uh, I don't know. But then little by little, things started coming out more. 
they were way, way deep inside from when I was a little kid and my, you know, five years old, six, seven, eight. A lot of the bad things like, that didn't really come out, they've been out. It was, I think, you know, that, and everybody has that young individual that is innocent and wants to live good. And I just heard a big noise. And then something happens where you start protecting this little child. You start growing up. You start doing all kinds of things that many times you shouldn't do. And then you get big, bad, and tough. And, and then you go off and have a family. And, and you start learning things about life that you didn't know before. And uh, uh, that little child is inside stays in there doesn't come out because you got them tucked away really nice but I've never known that that young child was still in there and that innocence could still come out so the way I'm explaining it might not make any sense to you but knowing olive oil her real name is Olivia Knowing Olivia and uh, me and our knowing about our youth and and how we've come up and that little something I don't know it, it's it's been good and I've just kind of released something that I've been I guess it's been blocking or protecting that innocent part of you of me. I don't know if that makes any sense. But I'm glad that I was in search of all this. Because I've never, it's never really happened before. And it's not something that I was looking for. Not anything that I expected. But it's been good. I'm 62 years old. If I make it, I'll be 63 this uh, December. And uh, I realized that the PCT has a. Uh, helped me accomplish something that I never even expected. That innocent little child doesn't need my protection right now. I'm good. Yeah, now the world's going to come back. And I'm still going to have to be that. Hurry up, you're in front of me and there's a red light. I don't know. But hopefully I would have learned enough out here to know that when the bad thoughts come, put them away. And when you want to do a good thing, just do it. Hopefully I learned a lot of those things that I kind of already knew. I have not. I mean, I've done some things. Volunteered here and there, but I'm not gonna, this is not a pat on my, myself on the back talk. So I want to let you know one of the things that you guys might experience if you guys come out here. And it's a good thing. Okay, I gotta, I'm gotta. supposed to be out on a place where there's water. There's a bunch of other hikers hanging out, but I guess they already left. All right, I'm gonna check out what's going on here. Talk to you guys later. So I just took a little break here. Um, there's supposed to be water here, but here's another thing that I should have known before. Mm. I got here, there was a few hikers. They had gotten here a little bit before I did. Resting. And uh, I saw the water. Which, let me show you. It's uh, it's the kind of water that you don't like to get. Not because the filter won't filter it. But because it will plug up your filter. And uh, unless you have enough water to back flush properly and all that. So. I asked. I said, hey, is there any any water? having already seen that water. And then this hiker said, yeah, you go up ahead a little bit. There's a little arrow pointing a certain way with H2O. So there's water over there. I said, oh, okay. So at that point, I just had to rest and I drank a liter and a half of my water, cameled up, which left me a little bit less than, than three liters. I have uh, 12 miles to go. About five of those miles are uphill. 
I go, after I drink my water, I go to get water. The water looks just like that. So somebody had put on gut hooks that there's water up ahead, but that was a while back. Nobody updated it. Then the arrow is still there. Well, that water is just the same thing as here. Might as well get it from here if it's that bad. I think I should be able to make it 12 miles, a little bit less than three liters. I don't like um, giving myself that short of a, that close of a call. So, um, so I got to do that. I got to do that 12 miles. If I were to stop short of the 12 miles, at nighttime I'm going to drink water. And then that'll leave me, and I got to eat dinner too. I mean, it'll leave me with hardly nothing for tomorrow's hike. So I have to make it, even if I night hike, I have to make the 12 miles today. It's getting pretty close to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And if it takes me 6 hours, 2 o'clock, that would put me at 6 and 8 o'clock at night. I mean, it, it's not a good situation. And if I would have known that the water wasn't good, I would have not camped up. I would have taken a shorter break and just kept going because that would give me more water for the actual hike. <sighs> so check first <laughs> is my is what I should have done. And I believe this person that she went over to look. Otherwise, you know. Anyway, check first. <laughs> Lessons learned. Oh, now I'm stuck. Oh, there we go. Okay. So somebody was nice enough to put the trail marker. And then right here it says H2O. Well, that's what the other hiker saw. And she just said, yeah, there's water over there. Ay, ay, ay. Hmm. Okay. This is going to be interesting. Right. Come on, where are you? Darn it. Sometimes the fighter pilots, the fighter planes, fly through here and I wanted to catch it. But okay. <coughs> so we got really nice views. Tent sites there. There's quite a few tent sites. Problem is there's no water. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's really nice here. And it looks like they've got some cloud cover also. It might rain. I think it's raining pretty far out there. And if it rains, uh, it'll be welcome, very welcome, as far as I'm concerned. If I get wet, I get wet. I got my rain gear, but I don't care if I get wet. Um, I don't think that day's going to get so cold that I'll have hypothermia or anything like that. So yeah, if it gets... If it rains, it rains. I just want water. Okay. Presently at around 10,300 10, feet. Taking a break. <sighs> okay. Well, I made it to the top of this, another uh, mountain. I'm at 10,685. Um, it's about six more miles, pretty much level to down here maybe a little a little up um, before I make it to uh, Dutch Meadow Spring I believe it's called where there is supposed to be water I was thinking about just overnighting it and right there because tomorrow I'll only have about um, about six miles and all downhill so that's what I'm really thinking about doing, but I still have a lot of sun, probably 
Uh, it's six o'clock right now, so I have a couple of hours of sunlight. I could probably make it down before sunset. <sighs> Today was a hmm, tough day. Yeah, a lot of because of the climbs and uh, the lack of water. I remember being in San Jacinto from mile 186.4 all the way down to 205.4 which we were all like it's a 20 mile stretch with no water of course it wasn't even hot or anything at that time up in the mountain then going down from 186 to 205.4 there wasn't really any major uphills there was a lot of snow in the Fuller Ridge area and then dry going down the back end the east end of uh, San Jacinto. Um, and here we are in the Sierra. 20 miles with no water. <laughs> no escape route either. So you have to do it. There was actually a couple of places that had dirty, muddy water. But that can cause problems with uh, your plugging of your filter. Even if you get some of the water and you back flush it even then it can cause problems I've seen filters completely plugged up you smack it on the side of the rock whatever try to back flush it just won't do it and those muddy waters can actually do that it's okay if you're gonna have clear water to flush and flush and flush but uh, when you got a 20 mile stretch and it's all muddy water and then after that you might have some problems getting fresh water to flush you want to avoid that well, at least I do so I have about I'm, I'm thinking I have about a liter and a quarter left and I have six miles so that's as long as I don't drink a lot at night time again dry camping unless I make it over there then I'll drink all the water I can possibly drink um, so I'll see what happens but yeah I made it to that top I'm at 10,685 feet Whew. talk to you guys later down there I believe that's I think that's um, Edwards Air Force Base. I'm not really sure. That is the Owens Valley, however. <clears throat> Found a decent spot here. A lot of stuff on the bottom I can punch in the mattress pad. Um, um, I was reading gut hooks and somebody put down saw a bear. Just no bow up here. 0.1 miles. That was a year ago. Um, so this is a Sierra. And I'm a solo hiker for the most part. Um, again, I'm spending the night. Tonight, yes, last night I spent it with other people. Tonight, I'm going to be solo. And I'm about six away, six miles away from the nearest hikers, which is over at Dutch Meadow Spring. Ah. My neck and then there's uh, behind me there's two hikers about two miles and I think they're gonna spend the night over there <sighs> um, so yeah there sorry so yeah um, bears are in the Sierra so I know that people should know that kind of like snakes are in the desert pretty much the same thing Except for I think there's more snakes in the desert than there is bears out here. But nonetheless, I got a bear canister. I got to put it away, get all the food that I have. Put it. I'm unfortunately, already cold soaked some dinner, but I'm not hungry. And it doesn't fit in my bear canister. So I got to do something with that food. It's in a little Talenti jar. Normally, I would eat it and then wash the Talenti jar and put, leave it outside. And nothing happens to it. It's empty and it's clean. Um, and if a bear takes it away, well, they took it empty jar. But, uh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I'll figure it out. All right. Talk to you guys tomorrow.